Um, I am Evgenia Svogodorska. I'm a data evangelist at Voca, a crowdsourcing platform. And today I want to talk a little bit about contextual relevance in uh, advertisement ranking. So, oops. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Uh, firstly, I would like to give a short overview of what the heck is contextual relevance and why are we interested in it uh, in relation to advertisement ranking. Secondly, I'll try to present how machine learning handles such a problem. Then on a post, like not on a model-centric way, but on a more data-centric way, I will show you how crowdsourcing could solve such a problem. And then we will receive a logical conclusion, uh, also like uh, uh, paired by the exact examples that I'll show about the crowdsourcing solution, that the hybrid approach for solving such a problem of a contextual relevance, hybrid, it means machine learning plus crowdsourcing, is the most successful one here. So let's start. Let's start with what I am talking about. I guess the main idea of the contextual relevance is uh, delivering the right message at the right time to the right person. Usually we have two types of targeting. It's contextual targeting and behavioral targeting. So behavioral targeting is more about like using the personal data of a user, which raises some privacy concerns. So that's why contextual relevance is more, I guess, uh, has a more good reputation amongst the users because it's usually uh, provides the data which is contextually relevant to the information that they are looking at now. But let me a little bit dissect what I'm talking about. What is these three components of a contextual relevance? Firstly, it's the right message. What are we talking here about? Firstly, of course, that the content should be relevant to the advertisement in the means of a context. So if we're talking, for example, about any platform or website of anything that you want to present your advertising, you would prefer the matching context. If we are having a site about the books, the advertisement about glasses or bookshops would be a skyrocketing hit. And about surfing, for example, mm, maybe a less successful one. And the second thing I would say about the right message is careful advertisement moderation. I have an experience working in advert advertisement moderation department myself as a technical specialist. And I would say that even a small typo, even an incorrect word using some obscene lexics or something could destroy the whole ad campaign. It's also about the context and about relevance. The second component is the right time. What is the right time? Mainly it's about sentiment analysis. What is sentiment analysis is when we are looking at the context for, in our case, it would be the pair of the advertisement and the content of the platform where we are placing our content. And we're thinking how they look together to user. May they uh, express some negative emotions, like cause some negative thoughts. For example, just imagine you're scrolling a website, you're reading the news about the recent plane crash and boom, you are advertised the ticket price, uh, for example, for a low coster. I guess you would be kind of disappointed with a brand presenting such an advertisement to you. The right person, here we're talking about two things. It's personalized recommendations, not in a way of using like the personal information, like cookies and stuff. No, we're leaving it to behavioral targeting. But for example, if we're like doing a targeting in a blogs or feeds, that's for example, use Reddit. It's a platform where you can use subscribe to subreddits or so. At least we can use the relevancy of the structure of the component, the components of the platform where you're using your advertisements. And also it's about a search relevance a little bit because this is using the relevance of the query that user like typed in and your advertisement you can create a really relevant content so the problem domain that we here are discussing not only about the contextual relevance but it also the sentiment analysis advertisement moderation personal recommendation and even more it's like about click fraud detections and real-time bidding so the problem domain seems very huge Okay, let's see how to approach this big elephant. 
Firstly, let's start with machine learning. Everybody, like I think every data scientist would firstly think about this problem and say, okay, I am solving the problem of contextual relevance. What should I do? Hmm, maybe I can just extract some keywords from advertisement. I can extract some keywords from the platform or from the site where I am like using or trying to advertise some content. And I try to see how close they are. And yes, that was like the first and the main approach. And that's how mainly all the machine learning approaches for this were developed. So as uh, any dat data scientist with any relevant experience would think, the first simplest ideas is just to like uh, extract keywords, extract, present them, at, for example, as some uh, frequency vectors, and then measure the relevance or use TF, TF IDF or like assign similarity. And yeah, you will be surprised that it's mainly the one of the approaches that used already for 20 years in such a topic. So, but uh, we need to understand that we have two types of uh, like advertisement and content to approach, we have a text one and a media one. Okay, if we're starting with a text, what solutions are here presented? We have two approaches mainly, it's a keyword-based model and a vector-based model. Vector-based model is when the texts are presented as vectors in some space with a different representations, the world embeddings, using like something simple like bag of words or like using something more, uh, sufficient or like Elmo, fast text, everything in the even birth was used for it. And then we're trying to find a similar similarity between these vectors. Keyword based model, as I said, also like presenting the idea of similarity when we are applying, for example, a classifiers, usually that if the advertisement is relevant or irrelevant to our content. Usually we apply such classifiers so for example, using support vector machines or linear regression, uh, or I'm sorry, logistic regression, uh, or any of the particular case, usually also uh, naive bias is skyrocketing at such a problem. Yeah, but if we're talking about media contact, is it different? Yeah, in such a way, I would say it's kind of similar. It's also about some keywords because we're like, using the contact, we're extracting some meaning from it, for example, with a computer vision tasks or a networks, we're detecting objects or from audio and video, we're like dissolving some objects in their keywords. For example, for video, it can be a edge detecting filter and then apply it like hemming distance between the hashed objects. And yeah, we're still talking about the similarity of some key idea of the contact here and contact there. So if we're talking, for example, for sentiment analysis, which is also a big part of the uh, contextual relevance problem, you can see how many approaches there are used, starting from like some uh, similar approaches, like statistical or semantical, and ending up with LCTMs and transformers. So I wanted to say, what do we need here? Is there like a one particular recipe? No, there is not. Basically, I just named to you it here is a logistic regression, SVMs, naive, naive bias, multinomial naive bias. We're using some natural language processing with word embeddings. And so we're using speech recognition, computer vision, and even the reinforcement learning if we remember the real time bidding problem. Because, like, we can use an agent which tries successfully auction some ads paired with content. Yeah, but here we have one particular problem. We have a lot of a lot of algorithms, a lot of models developed through time and they're acting perfectly. But the world of advertisements are very fast changing. Each day, the new laws, the new context arises and you need to retrain models. You need to use data and the data we need to get from somewhere. Here comes crowdsourcing. So how and why crowdsourcing solving the problem of data diversity? With crowdsourcing, working with people, you gain agility to the type of the content because people mainly without any retraining can see the contextual relevance between text, video, links, images, etc. 
for example, it's not like a new type of data for him that they never, for them that they never saw. Also, you gain agility to the language of the content using the crowd, like from the different countries with the different language knowledge. Uh, they can work on a different type of devices, but mostly they are very good with detecting sentiment and fast changing nature of rules and advertising. As um, as about sentiment, it's because they are mainly the users who see these advertisements usually on the site. So they're better than any algorithm can detect something that will feel for them negative or something. It's about fast changing nature of rules. I am as a person who personally created crowdsourcing projects for advertisement moderation. I'd like to say that uh, when the new law comes out, the fastest way to fix a change in the project is just to basically add one row in instruction and notify your crowdsourcers. So how can we evaluate contextual relevance with crowdsourcing? We can use any basically approach. We can use side-by-side -side measurement, just showing for the crowd the tasks when they, on their interface, they see side-by-side -side paired contact and advertisement. We can uh, add some difference with the page parts, or we can use a hierarchical system of the platform, or we can also extract keywords like the machine learning algorithms usually do. How usually the context relevance is measured with crowdsourcing? I would say you have also some options like binary, like binary classification is performed in machine learning, or you can add some options of expressing uncertainty or like capturing the negative sentiment, but uh, top companies like uh, who are usually applying the contextual relevance at ranking like Pinterest or Microsoft or Amazon, they usually use five option category scale, as you can see presented here. But mainly crowdsourcing is very agile on that behalf. So let's see the task example that I did to uh, on our crowdsourcing platform, I decided a four scale uh, measurement. Uh, it can be decided differently. And uh, here you can see how the crowdsources without any particular preparations, just with the instruction, find the relevant, just decide is it relevant or not, how they answered uh, my tasks, uh, which I gathered. Um, so, how it was like how I spend all of my time, how how much it's taking to uh, do such a project. Uh, I need to say that uh, for a first time in a crowdsourcing projects are particularly easy to set up. They are much easier than machine learning algorithms because you're I just spent ten minutes of setup in. I used an overlap of three, which is mainly like three people doing the same task, and with the zero stage accuracy when the people weren't trained at all they just used their prior knowledge that every one of us has from birth i had accuracy about 85 percent but you can notice here that i uh, labeled evaluated with their help only 25 tasks and it took some time so it was like about two two and a half minutes for a page which uh, contained, as I remember correctly, about six tasks. So you can measure that machine learning algorithm performing that would be like much, much, much faster working with the same data. Uh, also, I need to say that accuracy here is not very, I would say, good, <laughs> but uh, crowdsourcing as machine learning is a framework which requires iterations, which requires more training and development. So when I used this uh, zero stage accuracy, I just used the previous skill, which is like existing on our platform about just measuring images paired with each other, uh, how they look alike or not. I just used that skill which was measured with different projects and acquired this accuracy. So then on the first iteration, I just uh, spent a little bit more time and I created my personal skill, which was like a measured with uh, my secretly hided ground truth tasks, uh, which people evaluated. And their skill was counting, evaluated on, based on that. And with that, and with a little bit more tasks, the accuracy raised in 10%. But still, here you can see that 
mainly the same time. Okay, for setup, it was spent one hour, but mainly the same time was used per six tasks, which is like way, way longer than usually is required for advertisement uh, ranking, uh, any advertisement ranking, because advertising takes like a million, million of data flowing every, I would say not even an hour, but a minute. So let's talk about the hybrid approach. What can we do with crowdsourcing here? We can use it as a main instrument, but as I said, as a main instrument, it's not maybe powerful enough in this particular task because uh, advertising uh, is really connected with very voluminous data, but paired uh, as a source, used as a source for building large data sets for machine learning models, as you have seen on my quick recap and overview, or using as a tool for monitoring ML solutions implemented in production, you can achieve both things. You can achieve uh, also the variety and the fast nature, capture the fast, na uh, fa fast changing nature of the advertising, and also like uh, slave this problem, which is related to the voluminous amount of data. So for example, here you can see how we can use our crowdsourcing platform for monitoring ML models. We just have an API, we're running our current model in production, we're sampling some of it into the database, we're running the project, which returns the quality of the production model and provides some data for retraining it. So with that, I would like to sum up that uh, today I tried to show you that the contextual centric approach is a key to success. Um, why it's a key to success? Because it's, uh, it's not disturbs user with uh, looking in their private data, but still it's showing some relevant needed information. And the hybrid approach, crowdsourcing plus machine learning is a really strong one helping to tackle both problems of the fast changing nature of advertising and the amount of data processed in advertising. Thank you.